today we're just going to deal with the red and the blue and the two colors of creation of electrical force which in scripture are the ram and the lamb now uh revelation 21 23 says the city does not need the sun nor the moon to shine on it for the glory of god gives it light and the lamp is its lamp so once again and the lamb is its lamp now what's it talking about um okay well the city of god is in the head in the cranium in head heaven heaved up and the lamp is the optic thalamus the optic thalamus um, controls the senses and in particular the optics the the eyes the, um, the 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 nerves from the eyes and also it is connected with the um with the pineal gland and since aries is in the head the cerebrum the cerebran and the highest part of the body belongs to aries this is always considered to be the holiest animal of course the the holy cow and the bull taurus just below also in the cranium corresponding to the cerebellum the cerebulum so you've got the cerebran and the cerebulum notice that both these words begin with ceres ceres is sarah sarah and abraham are cerebrum and the cerebrum has mammillary mammillary glands so it's like a bosom and it secretes it has um these glands um, are, are secreting the the holy the holy fluid for the rest of the body and so the lamb aries is always associated with the pineal gland the third ventricle the optic thalamus and these are the organs in the body the spiritual organs which see not the physical to see the physical we have two eyes what is physical belongs to electrical force red and blue red and blue are the first colors of light which are born from white light white light is still doesn't vibrate and white light produces all the other colors but the first two to emanate from white light when it divides and splits are red and blue red is the ram blue is the lamb and we know this because electricity has two components a negative and a positive the negative belongs to the electron and the positive belongs to the prr, proton and the r and the l are prominent in these in these two strands of divided force divided gives us the word divine because the divine one is not prime creator he is not divine because he's not divided he is a unity he is nameless and formless no name can be uttered to describe that white magnetic light prime creator second creator is the demiurge the demiurgos the demigods demi comes from the word atom adom adem demi and it has to do with the twin force of electricity dom is red adam means red and backwards m a d adam m a d backwards is madre mother if you take the greek word at tom tom backwards is mot mother either way whether you use the word adam or atom backwards will give you mother and motor and motion and that motion is blue mother is blue 
And so inside of Atom, we have the Lan and the Ran, red and blue. And the reason why the lamp, the lamb is the lamp is because, <clears throat> because light is what helps us to see. And of course, with our two eyes, we see only what is material, the effect of what Prime Creator has produced with electrical force. In order to be able to see with other eyes or the other eye, I shouldn't say eyes because of the moment you suggest plural, two things, you are in a different world. There is the world of unity and there is the world of duality. There are two worlds and we belong in both. In body, we are in the electrical world of effects, atoms vibrating. And so today what we're going to do, I've just uh, introduced the subject to lay a foundation for um, for the subject of the lamb and the ram. What we're going to discover today is that everything in the universe is the lamb or the ram, everything. In your body, you have many lambs. You are full of lambs in your body. Outside of your body, you are breathing in lambs. The air is full of lambs. In the heavens, there is the lamb, the ram. And we're going to discover now what, what, what uh, this uh, lamb is. Since we're dealing with red and blue vibration, red, fire, blue, water, the two creative elements of nature. And this is why <clears throat> mist spelt M-I-S-T, deals with water, whereas mist spelt M-Y-S-T, as in mystery, is dealing with fire. You see, so we have a baptism of water and we have a baptism of fire. The mist in your body, by the way, mist is backwards for Tim. M-I-S-T. Remove the T. That remove the S and you have Tim. Tim is another way of saying a Tim. Tim is time, tempo, chronos, satin, atten. Everything goes back to atom. All words go back to atom. So the mist there again, we see that Tom backwards, mother is the same as mist, water. And so the mist, the water is in our body, and also the M-Y-S-T, the mystery, the mystical, hence we must be mystics. We are encouraged in all scriptures to get out of the world of water, mist, M-I-S-T, and the water baptism because it's an emotional baptism. You see all these churchgoers who are baptized in water. Oh, yes, I believe in Jesus, the Lamb of God, who lights up a lamp for my foot to tread the narrow and cramped path to everlasting life with his lamp, the Lamb of God. Um, these people are baptized in water. They do not know about the baptism of spirit and fire. And this is the mystic. Hence, the mystics depart from the watery mists and embrace the fiery mysteries. And that's what we're learning about today. And so we're going to look for the lamb everywhere in creation because everywhere you go, you will find the lamb. Your body is full of... All right. And so, um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look for the lamb. Now, the lamb in the scriptures is Agnes. So for all of the listeners who have got a browser open, you can Google image Agnes, Saint Agnes, A-G-N-E-S. Agnes is always carrying a lamb, just like Jesus, just like Hermes, Buddha, all the popes that have their portraits 
taken. Check out Pope Pacelli. You can uh, Google image that. And you'll see they're all walking around with a lamb in their arms. Reason being is they know that um, the lamb is everywhere in the universe, as you will see. Uh, but let's discover in what format the lamb is presented. First and foremostly as agnes. In Latin, igni. As in uh, igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are rocks that are produced by fire. Aries, the lamb is fire, light, lamp, agnes, pure. Agnes means pure. In Hebrew, hana, anna, a-n-e. This is why when we go from the allegoric, which is a spiritual level, we go to the anagogic, which is the fire level. The anagogic means everything pertaining to mystery, mystical, fire. So Anna, Hannah, um, Leanne, um, Julianne, uh, anything with Anne has to do with the Lamb. The year in Hebrew, Hashanah, Hashanah, like Rosh Hashanah. Hashanah means year and the ram right ascension of meridian is the sun jar ram right ascending on the ecliptic it's always the lamb why because the sign aries the ram is the first sign of the zodiac of astrology and the sun when it bursts forth every morning is symbolically figured to be in Aries from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. every morning. And so this is why the Lamb, Agnes, Ignis, Anna, Hoshanna, is always on the ecliptic. It's the Lamb, right ascending, Ram. And so if you understand Ignite, means to start a fire and then you look at the the seventh element on the periodic table nitrogen you will see that nitrogen is nothing but ignite nitrogen nitrogen is fire there are four elements nitrogen oxygen hydrogen and carbon which make the human body and those four elements correspond to the four platonic elements. First and foremostly, fire, nitrogen. Air, oxygen. Water, hydrogen, hydra. Earth, carbon, the carbon crystal. Carbon-12 is the most common isotope in the universe. Carbon-12 is everywhere. 12 is the operative number. Everything in the universe goes by 12s, 12 signs of the zodiac, 12 cranial nerves that come from the cerebrum, from the ram. See, the lamb of God with his 12 apostles, the 12 cranial nerves, direct the whole body. And so we have nitrogen is the element which we breathe. Oxygen is 78% nitrogen. 78 is the Kabbalistic number of the tarot cards. There are 78 cards in the tarot deck. 78% Ig nitrogen, Agnes the lamb, that you breathe, is in the air. Coupled with oxygen, 20%, 21%, uh, no, I think it's 20% oxygen. Oxygen is the ox, the bull, the holy cow. So what you're breathing is the lamb and the cow, nitrogen and oxygen, the lamb and the bull, the two uh, cerebral, ceres, cerebram and cerebulum in the head. The other 1% of air is argon. Argon is short for argos. Argos is a deacon of cancer. Argos is the ark. Noah's Ark. If you need to know who Noah is, just Google image Nu, N U or N U N, the Egyptian god. 
Google image and you will see that Nu, Noah, is holding Argos, the ark, above his head with 12 people in it. Uh, sorry, <laughs> seven people in it. This is Noah's ark, Nu's ark, with eight souls. And it's Argon, because Argon is the 18th element, 666, of the periodic table. Argon, Argos, is the boat. It carries all other elements. All the other elements are united and carried in that boat of Argon. Scientists know that Argon is responsible, is universal, and it is the key element by which all the other elements are carried. It is the glue of the universe. So you see, this is why Noah, he gets seven sheep and seven cattle, and he puts them in his ark, his bark, the ecliptic, because the sun generates nitrogen and oxygen for us to breathe. The sun is the lamb of God and the holy cow. Another name for the sheep is um, Ovis Ammon, O-V-I-S, from which the women get their ovaries. When you Google image ovaries, you will see that they look like a ram's head because it's the lamb in your body. Everywhere in your body is the lamb. Ovis Ammon. Ammon is amino acids. You have 22 amino acids in your body. 22 is the number of the tarot deck, the major arcana. There are 22 amino acids. Ammon, the lamb. Amino acids are made of four elements. Nitrogen, ig nitrogen. Oxygen, the bull. Hydrogen, the serpent, hydra. And carbon, which is cabra, the goat. These are all the holy animals that ever were in scripture. The serpent, the lamb, the bull, and the goat. Nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon. Hydrogen is number one in the periodic table. Nitrogen is number seven. Oxygen is number eight. Sorry. Carbon is six. Nitrogen is seven. Oxygen is eight. When you add those numbers, you come to 22. There are 22 amino acids made from four elements, which add up to 22. So what are the amino acids? The amino acids, the lamb of God, are the organic components which make up all of the body. The organs, or is light organic abraham came from the city of ur or gold orific the lord o r wherever you see o r you have gold and so this is the amino acids 22 and laminins let's look up the word laminin so you may need to um, pull up a, uh, a Google search again, just to be more effective. Spelling. L-A-M, of course, the Lamb of God. L-A-M-I-N-I-N. -I -N -I -N. And you, wanna, you might want to Google image this because if you don't, you're going to miss everything. You, you will never understand what the lamb actually means. And what you'll find when you Google laminin is you'll find that in your body, these laminins are little crosses and they are the glue of your body. They are major proteins in the basal lamina, one of the layers of the basement membrane, a protein network foundation for most cells and organs. The laminins are an important and biologically active part 
of the basal lamina, influencing cell differentiation, migration, and adhesion. Please take note, adhesion. Those little crosses, those little lambs, laminins, they are crucial and vital for the human body's existence. They are the glue of the body. And they are responsible for survival. Now, here's a little trick. Google image, lamb and the cross. And you'll see countless hundreds and hundreds of religious images of a lamb on a cross. Why is the lamb crucified? Because it's dealing with laminin. Now, people who are not familiar with syncretism will automatically shut down and their mind will go, oh, yes, but these are all coincidences and, and you know, who knows why scientists called laminin laminin. Well, here's how it works. Scientists don't call anything anything. There's nothing new under the sun. All the words that are chosen, seemingly chosen, just as we choose, seemingly choose the name of our children, etc., etc. No, no. All of this is foreordained by light. Conscious light. Light makes the words. Light is the producer of language. Language is light. It's an effect of light because as we speak, we produce a vibration. And that vibration, red and blue, ram and lamb, right and left, war and love, and you will find the letters R and the letters L in all of those words. War and love, red and blue, right and left, Ra and L is Ra. L, ram and lamb, and there are many, 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 many more words. Little, little lambs of God crucified. That cross shape is as glue. It's an it's 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 binding. They're stuck together. It's one horizontal bar and one vertical bar. These are glued together, bonded, bonded. O n d gives you don, Adon. This is why Adam was a bonded slave, a slave of light. Not of God, because God is generation, operation, dissolution. Pity the fools who worship God on the worship of God, the Demiurgos, the God of good and evil. Pity them, because they know not prime creator. Okay, let's continue. Uh, here's another word to um, look up in your browser. Uh, lemniscate. Lemniscate. L-E-M. Lamb. N-I-S-C-A-T-E. Again, lemniscate. L E M. N I S C A T E. And what you'll see is that figure eight produced by light. Every particle of light, in fact, our sun produces it. The sun produces this figure eight shape in the sky. It's actually called an analema. We'll get to that in a minute because twice the word lamb is to be found in the word analema. Analema. But let's concentrate on lemniscate. They are very similar. The lemniscate is what light produces. Light is the lamb, the lamp of God. And it is a figure eight. And the word comes from Latin lemniscatus, meaning decorated with ribbons. And those ribbons, you'll find ribbon hiding in the word deoxyribonucleic acid dna dna is an anagram for dan is an anagram for and andros the man andrew in english manly deoxyribon 
ribonucleic acid, ribbon. You have two strands, two ribbons in DNA, and you have two ribbons in lemniscate because lemniscatus means decorated with ribbons. Let us proceed. We have the word analema. Please search analema in your browser. A-N-A-L-E-M-M-A. -E analema. And you will see two serpents or you will see a serpent doing the figure eight in the sky. The sun produces this effect. Now, I, I can't spend time explaining how the analema is produced, but suffice to say, if you had a, a good camera and you took a photograph every day at the same spot in the northern skies, and in, ca in the case of people who are living in the northern hemisphere, hemisphere you should be pointing your camera to the southern skies. For all people in the southern hemisphere, your camera should be pointed to the northern skies. Northern hemisphere people point to the southern skies at midday. So what you're doing is you're taking a photograph of the sun every day for a year. You have 365 photographs. And what you'll find is that the sun will produce a figure eight in your photographs. Okay, so you might want to um, YouTube Analema, and there's many videos showing how this figure eight is produced by the sun. Analema, Anna is the lamb, Lemma is the lamb. Everything produced by light is the lamb, the lamb of God. No wonder the Savior, Jesus, is the lamb of God. No wonder. In the Quran, the book of the Ram, the Qutb of the Ram, they talk about the Islam, the church of Isis, the Lamb. Isis is light, the Lamb, Islam. And you go over to the east and you go to the Dalai Lama because the head chief Lamb of, of the Buddhists is a Lamb. And then you go to the Hare Krishnas, and they teach you to chant Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. Because there is only the Ram or the Lamb. Take your choice. The Ram is the red energy of the universe, the red light, and the Lamb is the blue light. The blue is the loving, peaceful, feminine light, hence the Lamb of God, humble and discreet. And then the ram of God, obnoxious and forthright, arrogant and taking control of his life and situation. The red light. <clears throat> when you see any words like lemniscate and analema, which have L-M-N in them, as in the middle of the alphabet, L-M-N is always to be found in every alphabet in the middle. M is for middle. And, of course, <clears throat> these have to do with words such as element. You see, the lamb, L, produces elements from electrons. Elect. Who are the elect? They are the lambs of God. The sheep. The shepherd only looks after the sheep. He is the shepherd of the flock of lambs, of light. Subliminal, L-M-N. Lumen, mundane light, which comes from lux, divine light. Lumen. Aluminium, an element, L-M-N. Lemon, produced by sunlight. Column, a pillar in a temple. The Greeks had columns like the Doric, the Ionic columns, and these, and the Corinthian columns. They had three kinds. And the Corinthian columns were the most famous. Column has L M N in it. Why? Because it is a pillar of light, like an obelisk, channeling the, the light of Ra, Ob El Isk. L, wherever there is light, there is L. 
And so an obelisk, a column, L-M-N, a mantle. What is a mantle? Our bodies have a ma are, are mantles, L-M-N. The Elohim, L-M. Luminatrix, Mary the Luminatrix, L-M-N. Luna, moon and luna. When you combine the two, the English and the Italian words moon and luna, you have L-M-N. Alumen, what is alumen? Salt, bitter salt, L-M-N. Salt, we are made of salt. Our bodies are salt. Everywhere is the lamb. Nowhere is not the lamb. Everywhere is the lamb. Why do I say everywhere? Because everywhere begins with Eve. E-V-E. -E. Eve is the you. Just put a W in there and you have you, the female lamb. Adam. Adam is the lamb, the ram, and Eve is the you. And she is everywhere. Eve. In Italian, ovunque, everywhere, ovunque, o, v, u, ovu, ave, ave Maria, everywhere is the lamb. And how do we know Adam is the lamb? Because Mars, backward, is ram, and Mars in Hebrew is ma adim. Mars is the ruler of Aries, the ram. Ma Adam, M A D I M, is exactly how you say Mars in Hebrew. So they tell you in Hebrew that Mars is Adam, and Venus, just put an E in front of Venus, and you have Eve. Where else can we find the lamb? Google image, uh, <clears throat> if you have a browser. These are the names of the chakras, starting from the bottom red chakra. You may have pen and paper in hand. The bottom chakra, the red chakra, is called LAM, L-A-M, LAM. The navel chakra, VAM, V-A-M. The solar plexus, RAM, R-A-M. The heart chakra, YAM, Y-A-M. The throat chakra, blue, HAM, H-A-M. The purple chakra, the third eye, Aum, A-U-M. The crown chakra, yep. Because the crown chakra embraces all the bottom chakras, it is called all, A-double-L, -L, all, which is Allah. Allah means all because Allah is everywhere, the lamb, the lamb of God. Hang on a minute, I'll get to this chicken okay so uh where were we okay so we're up to um the chakras they are all the chakras are lambs because they are lights chakra ra is the disc in the heavens the sun and in fact that's what it, in hindu chakra means little discs discs of light and we have seven of them and isn't it funny how revelation said and the lamb of god is worthy to open the seven seals because the Lamb of God has been slain from the founding of the earth. What that means, to slay the Lamb, means to slay the light, the white light. When the white light is killed and produces electrical red and blue force, the Lamb now is slain. And so whenever light emanates from anywhere, any particle of light, it always emanates first from the Lamb, Aries, Cardinal Fire. Never can light start from Taurus or Gemini or Cancer. Light can only begin from Cardinal Fire because fire is light. The other elements are dimmer, dimmer aspects of fire, light. And you see, Agnes. Saint Agnes, Agnes means pure. Pure is purge, purify, pyramid, fire in the middle. Empyrean, our true magnetic home where we will return one day to the Empyrean in the skies. Pure, 
purify, purge the Puritans who were not pure at all. They were deceivers, Calvinists and evil killers. <clears throat> okay, let us continue now. Where else do we find the lamb? And by the way, this Ra'el is Ra'el, the ram and the bull, right and left, red and blue. This gives us words like rebel, ramble, ramble on. I think Led Zeppelin had a song like that, didn't they? Oh, not I think. I know they did. One of my favourite songs of all time. Revel, to revel in light, to reveal, to pull back the veil of Isis, the veil, to be real. What does it mean to be real? Keep it real, brother. Ra'el, light, keep it light. Raul, a Spanish boy, a male name. Royal, why does the king get to be Ra and El? Why is he alone royal? To rule, and why does he get to rule Ra and El? Rock and roll, Ra and El. Travel, when you travel, Ra and El. Because traveling Ra and El is the only thing that is going on. Everything about Ra and L, proton and electron, right and left, as Walter Russell says, magnetic white light stills the red and the blue. One goes off to the right, one goes off to the left. And they are two spirals, toroidal fields. You see, the horns of Aries describe the golden mean. One, one, one two, three, five, eight, thirteen, etc., etc. The Fibonacci spiral ratio. Whereas the bull, the horns of the bull, they describe the doubling effect. Double to double. Eve is the ruler of Taurus and she doubles. It's the second sign. Two is doubling. The bull. And so the sun exalts in Aries, the ram. So Ra is the sun. And the moon exalts in Taurus, the bull, Baal. And you've always had those two gods, Ra and Baal, Ra and El. Keep it real if you want to be royal and you want to rule your life. Because those two consonants, the letter R is the 18th letter of the alphabet, 666. The letter L is the 12th. That's why Emmanuel, electricity, Jesus, has 12 disc eyeballs, 12 uh, postals, posts, because there are 12 posts in the sky. And so <clears throat> he is the ruler of Israel. And the children of Israel are we, Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Gemini, etc., etc., etc. And so the land. Where else do we find the lamb? Google image the word lambdoid. L-A-M-B-D-O-I-D. And you will find that the lambdoid is the, uh, the bones of the cranium. Just behind Aries, the cerebran. The lambdoid. Everywhere in your body is the lamb. Everywhere. Nowhere is it not. Everywhere, Eve, the you, the lamb. <clears throat> now, Google image the word foramon. F-O-R-A-M-O-N. Ammon. And you'll find that in your cranium, you have 21 Foramons, including the Foramon Magnus, which is the big hole. Four means hole. Ammon means the lamb. And the Foramon is at the bottom of your cranium, where your esophagus and your spinal cord and nerves, the vagus nerve, go through that big hole at the bottom of your cranium. cranium. That's called a Foramon, the hole of Ammon, the lamb. Aries, the cerebran. 
and you have 21 in your cranium. 21 are the trump cards in the tarot. There are 21 trump cards. The major arcana have 22 because you add the fool, the first card which is not numbered. The numbered cards amount to 21. And these are the 20, the 22 paths, the 32 paths in your body, and they all come from the body where the lamb is. Because Revelation 21, 23, the city does not need the sun nor the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the lamb is its lamp. Hence, we have all these names. You might want to take note of these names. All these names occur in languages, and they all have to do with the ram. Ever wondered why Jesus is called the ransom of mankind? Because inside the word ransom, you have ram's son. He is the son of the ram. This is why Agnes in the Ramayana, the lamb, is the firstborn of Brahma, the ram. Of course he's a ransom, the son of the ram. Here are the names. Rambert in German, mighty or intelligent. Rami, Arabic, loving. Ramhart, German, mighty or intelligent. Same as Rambert. Rami, Arabic, loving. Different spelling, by the way. Rami, I know it sounds like I just repeated those names, but I haven't. They're different spellings. Ramirez, Spanish. Ramiro, Spanish, means judicious. Why does, why does Ramirez mean judicious? Because in Greek, the word for ram, Aries, is krios, from which we get to criticize, to give critique. Of course, when we criticize, we are judicious. Hence, Ramirez, Ramiro. English, ram, R-A-M-M, means the ram. Ramon in Spanish. Raymond in German. All these words, all these names have, have meanings that pertain to light and to be mighty and to be the Lamb of God, okay? Ramsey in English. Ramsden from Rams Valley. Ramsey, Rams Island in Scottish. Uh, Rand in English. Randall, Randale, Randall, Ranson, Randy. What does it mean to be Randy? It's the Ram. The horny one. Yes, he's got horns. And both, as I said before, the horns of the ram denote the, the um, golden mean, the golden section. Phi, hence, funny how they called Leonardo Bonacci, Fibonacci, that's his nickname, son of Bonacci, figlio di Bonacci, Fibonacci. And Phi is the golden section, which is what Leonardo de Bonacci was famous for. 800 years ago, when he introduced the Arabic numbers into the West and discarded with Roman numerals forever. Yes, that was done by Bonacci. Bon means good. Archi means disposition, good light. God is bon. God is good. Rain, R-A-N-E, strong counsellor, the ram. Ranel, strong counsellor. Ranan, meaning joyful. These are all names given to men and women. Hence, in the book of Revelation, 29 times the Lamb, the Lamb, the Lamb of God. In the book of Revelation, which means apocalypse, which means revealing, and reveal is Ra and El, which is light. The revealing of light. No wonder the Lamb has seven seals to open those seven chakras so that we can stand on Mount Zion and as Revelation, uh, Mount Zion, which is the, um, the spinal column, the top of the head, Mount Meru, Mount Shambhala, where in Revelation chapter 14, 1, it says, And look and behold, I saw the Lamb of God standing on Mount Zion with 144,000. Yes, because when you add all the chakras, the petals of the chakras, the bottom six chakras, they all amount to 144. When you multiply 144 by the top chakra, one 
thousand petals, the thousand leaf lotus, you get 144,000. And standing on Mount Zion with the Lamb Aries upon Mount Zion, the Lamp of God, singing as if a new song. Of course, when you have the new consciousness, when you open the seven seals, the seven chakras, you have a different consciousness. You don't sing old songs. You don't sing, you know, buying and eating, uh, uh, buying and selling, eating and drinking, marrying and building houses until the flood comes and sweeps you away. You sing a new song. You put on the new personality. Hence the Hindus, they have their most ancient book, the Ramayana. What does the Ramayana mean? Going, advancing, the Rama's journey. Ram. In Ireland, the Irish, they have Imram, Old Irish for rowing about, voyaging. Plural, Imrama. I M R A M H A. In early Irish literature, a story about an adventurous voyage. This type of story includes tales of Irish saints traveling to Iceland or Greenland, as well as fables, fabulous tales of pagan heroes journeying to the other world. An outstanding example of an Imram is Imram Brain. Brain? So this hero in Irish called Brain, would that be Bran? Yes, the voyage of Bran, which describes a trip to the lasted, to the enchanted land of women. After what seems to be a year, year is short for Yaran, Bran and his colleagues return home to discover that their voyage had lasted longer than any memories and was recorded only in ancient sources. So, and this is why Islamists have an imam. An imam is a leader of the flock. Imram, it's short for Imram. And this is why Hiram is the builder of soul of man's temple, Hiram Abif, you see. And, of course, that is Rama, Sri Rama, born on the 15th of April, Aries, the Lamb of God, hence the Ramayana. And this is why Priam was the king of Troy. Priam is Pram, the Ram of God. And this is why Deborah, which means to speak, was sitting under the palm tree of Rama, of course, because it's the Ram. And this is why Samuel, he had a circuit. And Samuel is the son. And he began his circuit in Rama. And then he went to Bethel, Gilgal, Mispa. Rama is the ram, Aries. Bethel is Cancer, where the tropic, where the solstice occurs. Bethel, the house of God. Gilgal is Libra. Mispa, no, sorry, Mispa is Libra and Gilgal is um, Capricorn. Those are the four cardinal points. Of course, Samuel has four cities and he starts his journey yearly in Rama, year, short for Yaran, the proto-Germanic word Jaran for year. This stuff cannot be hidden, friends. It cannot be hidden. All you need to do is pay attention. Don't go to the priests down at the local Jehovah's Witness Church or the Mormons or the Baptists because they're teaching you that Jesus is coming back in the clouds like Santa Claus comes down the chimney. Just wait and you'll catch him. Won't you? In the Rig Veda, the hymn, in the first opening verse of the Rig Veda, there are four Vedas, okay? The Rig Veda is the most famous of the Vedas, of the Vedic wisdom. And this is how it begins, dear friends. I, Lord Agni, the chosen priest, God, minister of sacrifice, the Hotar, lavishest of wealth. Verse 2, worthy is Agni. Verse 3, through Agni man obtaineth wealth. Verse 4, Agni, the perfect sacrifice which thou encompassed. Verse 5, 
May Agni, sapient-minded priest, truthful, most graciously great, the God come hither with the gods. Verse 6. Whatever blessing, Agni, thou wilt grant to thy worshipper. Verse 7. To thee, dispeller of the night, O Agni, day by day with prayer, bringing thee reverence, we come. Verse 8. Well, funny, Agni does not appear in verse 8. It says, ruler of sacrifices, guard of law eternal, radiant one, Ra, increasing in thine own abode. Verse 9. Be to us as easy of approach, even as a father to his son, Agni. You see, those are the opening words. And who is Agni? The firstborn of Rama. Brahma. Islam, the opening words. Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. In that verse, in the name of Allah, the Ram, the Ram, the merciful, the gracious, because that's what the Ram is, the cerebram. Al-Rahman al-Rahim, or il-Rahman il-Rahim, depending on your accent and where you live in the Arabic world. But that is six times the, the lamb is mentioned in the opening verse of the Quran, the Qutub of the Ran, the book of the Ran in Islam. And why do I say that? Because wherever you see the letter L in Arabic, the letter L, the 12th letter of the alphabet is called lamb in Arabic. In Hebrew, it's called lamed. In Greek, it's called lambda. Yes, because the letter L is the lamb, the 12th letter. And the lamb, Jesus, has 12 disciples. In the opening book of the Bible, the Torah, it says, Bareshit bara Elohim. Three times lamb is mentioned in the opening verse of the Bible, Genesis 1 1. Bara shit bara ra Elohim. What does El mean? El means lamb. Elohim means twister, to turn. Because the Elohim are the seven planets and they twist and turn. And the twisting and turning is the twisted horn of the Zohar, the Zophar, the horn of the Lamb. This is why the Jews blow the Zohar. And what is the book of the Zohar? The Zohar is the book of the Lamb. Everything is the Lamb. Nothing is not the Lamb. Everything is the Lamb. The, Hindu have a, the Hindus have a book called the Mahabharata. Bara is Bra, the Ram. The Zoroastrians, they have Ahiraman and Ariman. That's the Ram. It's all the Lamb. In Jainism, they also have the Ram. All their words have Ra in it. Ram, Ram, everywhere, Ram. The Torah, Ra is the Ram. <clears throat> um, this is why. The greatest temple on the Nile at Karnak is devoted to Amun-Ra. Amun is the ram. And when you go in that temple, the biggest temple on the planet, you will see the ram-headed God. And there is an avenue of sphinxes leading up from the Nile all the way to the temple of Karnak. And what are those sphinxes? But rams. And under the head of the ram, is a statue of Ramses on every single one of those rams along the avenue of rams, of sphinxes, from the Nile to the temple of Amun-Ra, Karnak, the biggest temple in the planet. Ra, Amun-Ra. Ammonia. Ammonia is produced when nitrogen, ig nitrogen, Agnes, the lamb, is combined with hydrogen. And you get ammonia, ammon, the lamb. Ammonia or arzane is a compound, compound of nitrogen and hydrogen when the formula NHB, with the formula NHB. It is, it is an odorless, it, a colorless gas 
with a characteristic pungent smell. Ammonia contributes significantly to the nutritional needs of terrestrial organisms by serving as a precursor to food and fertilizers. Yes, you fertilize with it. Yeah, because it's light. Light makes grow. It's photosynthesis. Nitrogen, ig nitrogen is the lamb. They have named, here is a quote from 7th century, the etymologies of Isidore of Seville. Isidore of Seville was a great etymologist, and he uncovered many, many holy words of which I have uh, uh, looked at and studied, and here is the lamb. Here is the quote from the 7th century AD. They have named Ares, i.e. the ram, on account of Ammon Jupiter, because those who made the idols fashioned the horns of the ram on his head. Ammon, whose name for good reason is rendered the son of my people, is so derived that partly its sense is of a proper name and partly it is an expression in itself for Ami, A-M-M-I, after which the Ammonites are named, is the word for my people. Several words derive from the ancient Egyptian name Amun via the Greek form Ammon, Ammonite, an extinct marine mollusk with a flat petitioned spiral shell from Latin Cornu Ammonus, Cornu Ammonus, literally Horn of Ammon, Ammonia, Salt of Ammon, from Greek Ammon, an Egyptian god near whose temple ammonia and ammoniac were said to be obtained. Now, what do you what do you put in your in your your car batteries, people? Ammonium chloride, chemical used in batteries. Amino intermediates in metabolism. Amine, amine, ammonia. All of these come from Ovis Ammon, which is a large wild sheep found in the dry mountainous regions of Central and Northern Asia. And this word is the word that we get, which is in Jesus' name, Amen. And so when you look at the ovaries from Ovis of a woman, take a look, Google image ovaries, and there you will see the ram. Google image, <clears throat> uh, well, let's try, for instance, um, Muhammad. Muhammad was nicknamed, you see, he went to a cave to get the Quran, and the cave was called Hida. Hida is the high ram, H-I-R-A. Of course, he went into the cave. The cave is in your head. He went into his head, the high ram, Aries. To get, to get the um, the Quran, Muhammad. It is said when you um, look up in Wikipedia about Muhammad, you will learn this. Due to his upright character, he acquired the nickname Al Amin. Al Amin. So A L, which is the prefix to a name, and then followed by A M. I N, Amin, which is also there's another de derivation of it, Amin, A M E E N, or Amin, which is A M I E R. All of these Amin, Amun, Amir. I named my son David Amir. Twenty two years ago, <clears throat> Amir means prince. Of course, because Amon. The ram is the prince. In Persian, Amir, A-M-E-I-R or A-M-I-E-R, is the prince, the lamb. And so Muhammad's nickname was Al-Amin, and his possible birth date was April 19th, Aries, just four days away from Sri Rama, which is April the 15th. And in Rome, they used to celebrate Cerealia on April the 15th. Cerealia is the cerebram because the sun is transiting Aries 
the Sarah Brand. Okay. Well, I'll just finish with this list of names, okay? These are all the high rams, the heroes, the Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the Hira, which in, in, um, in the east means the sun, the hero. Here are all the holy hero names for the lamb. Abraham departs out of Haran. First he comes from the land of Ur, then he goes to Haran, of course, because the ram belongs in the high ram. Hera, one of the runes, J-E-R-A, in the rune stones. What does it mean? It means the year, Yera. Hebron, the mountain on which God's temple is built, is called the beloved of the merciful. Hebron is the high ram. Hira in the Quran is the revelation, the cave of Hira where Muhammad Alamin, the lamb, produced the Quran, the book of the lamb. Hira in Urdu, when you go to India, many men are called Hira. Hira means darkness. Darkness is one pole of light. The ram, the lamp, the lamb, light. Hiram, Hiram Abif, Tyrian, widow's son, sendeth to King Solomon. Of course, Hiram is a Tyrian because Tyre was the ancient Phoenician city where they died in porphyry and purple. And the high ram, Ares, is the purple crown chakra. The ram, the royal Ra'el lamb, decked in purple. So, of course, Hiram, Tyrian, widow's son. Why would he be a widow's son? Because the ram is the son of God, only begotten, electrical force. Doesn't require anything but separation. When white light separates, it produces its only begotten son, electricity. Magnetism cause, electricity effect. Sendeth to King Solomon, of course, because Hiram, the purple crown chakra, commands the rest of the body, which is the soul of man. Hare Rama, he who removes illusion in, in um, Hindu, also called Hari, H-A-R-I, the remover of illusions. Hiromi, the name of my wife, meaning beautiful and kind, High Ram, the hero, Hiromi. Hiro in Japanese, the most common Japanese name, Chihiro, my wife's daughter's name chi hiro chi is chi energy and hiro is the hero the high ram ya ram yara the yara river in melbourne melbourne the city where i come from is built built on a river which is called the yara river the most one of the most common names aboriginal names is yaram there's many famous footballers in our um Australian rules football who are called Yaram. This is Jaram in the land of Australia. Okay, all of these words are Aboriginal. Yaram, Jara, Yara, and Yaram. Okay, Jaram. It's everywhere. There's nowhere in the universe where there is not the land. Jera, Hebrew word, Jehovah has seen. Jera, J E R A H. Jerusalem, otherwise known as Hiero Salem, the peace of the Lamb, of the hero, Heru. Herod, Herod the Great. Herod is just hero with a D on the end of it. What does it mean? Son of a hero. Pharaoh, Pharaoh is another way of saying hero. What does it mean? Great house. Yes, because the house, the astrological house of Ares, the high ram, is a great house. A hare, a rabbit, hare spelt H-A-R-E, the rabbit was considered divine, a creature of the sun. Rabbit is rabbit, is short for Rabinim, which means the sons of Ra. Hence the, 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 the hare has always been considered, this is why you have Rabbits in Easter, when the sun is in Aries. What has a rabbit got to do with eggs, Easter eggs? Well, because 
it's the hare, the hero, the rabbit, ra. Haru, haru in Japanese is the springtime. Hence you get spring roll is harumaki. Haru is Horus because Horus is the spring, the spring months of the horizon. In Korean, Haru, the same word, means day. Day is the sun, the hero, the high ram. Horus, hour. We get the word hour from Horus. Hours of the day. What hour is it? Where is Horus? A harem. What's a harem? Well, naughty boys have harems, don't they? And what does harem mean? H-A-R-A-M. To ram. It's a forbidden place. Sacrosanct. A sanctum. A holy place. Sacred. A sacred, inviolable, inviolable place. A harim. Also spelled H-A-R-I-M. Jerome. Saint Jerome. Herom, Rome is the ram. I've always said this. Rome is the ram, ruled by Mars. Mars, Rome is martial, martial law, maritime law. Marble, Rome is built with marble. Rome gives you a marriage certificate. Rome is marvellous, marvellous Rome. Everything about Rome, the patron saint of Rome is Mars, of course, because, and the eagle. The eagle is the ruler of Scorpio. Scorpio is ruled by Mars. Rome is the high ram, ruling over the rest of the planet. Hurry. Why do we say hurry? Because hurry is the high ram, a rushing ram. Hooray. What does hooray mean? Again, the high ram. Elation, victory. All righty, that's it, guys. As a true heavenly body. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to understand that, that um, question, but I did say that Anna is, is fire, anagogic, Hannah in Hebrew, fire, lamb, igni, agni, igneous rock, everything pertaining to fire. And, um, and in fact, above Jesus' head when he was crucified was Inri. Okay, well, the I there is for ignis, the fire element, and the other words have to do with the other elements, water, earth, and air. So the, the lemniscate, the lamb who runs around in ribbons, is light. And, of course, light can never be destroyed. So that figure eight of the lemniscate um, describes the eternal ribbon of eternity the figure eight now 2015 two plus one plus five equals eight we are in the year of eight we are also in the year of the lamb in in uh, in chinese right last year was the year of the horse now we are in the year of the lemniscate eight 2015 and in chinese it is the year of the lamb, the sheep, okay? And so <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, that means that in this year there will be death and transformation because that's what eight depicts. The circle above is life above in the spiritual realms and the circle below is, water, is the watery life below the horizon. You see, so when our, our lamp light incarnates in on earth we dip below um we 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 have bodies we we come from a womb so we are entombed in bodies we come from the womb we go to a tomb and that tomb is represented by the figure eight the bottom part is where we are entombed and then we escape through the lemnis gate and then we go to the top part and so this is death and transformation. This year will bring about the death of things that we have known for a long time. They will die. And then what will come out of the death, like the phoenix, is a, the phoenix rises out of the fire, the Promethean fire. Fire is consciousness. 
consciousness will create a new reality this year, this year, the, the figure eight. And then 2016 is the number nine, the ninth heaven. And then we will be in paradise. And that is to say, if we awaken, if we awaken and we, we return our cerebrospinal oils back to the Lamb of God and we become lambs and heroes, high rams, and go to Jerusalem, the high city of the optic thalamus. That's what Jerusalem is. It's the high, it's the high bits in the body where the, the, the purple chakras are, you see, because when you look at your body, I'm sorry, I've, I'm, I've gone away from Lemniscate, but I have to say this because it, 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 it must be said. You see, in the torso, the top chakra is blue and the bottom chakra is red. There's your red and blue. And when you mix red and blue, guess what color you get? Yeah, purple. Purple comes from red and blue. And this is why only in the torso is red and blue, but in the head is only a mixture of the two. Because when you mix the two, you go into the middle. And purple light is another way of saying white light. Because purple light is the highest vibrating light that uh, the physical human eye can see. Above that is called ultraviolet. Above purple, ultraviolet. Way down the other end, you've got infrared, because red is the other extremity. But purple, this ultraviolet light, which is really just white light, is obtained through the balancing of red and blue, mixing them, coming to the purple, being royal, being the Lamb of God, decked in purple and then because it's the highest vibrating light we are then walk straight into the beautiful white light of eternal unconditioned consciousness i hope i answered that correctly but uh, a bit waffling on there but all good information beautiful beautiful wow that was a really good question perfect true it is because name in latin comes from no men no men comes from Numen. Numen comes from Lumen, mundane light, and Lumen comes from looks. Let's go through that again. So Nomen, which means no man, is Nain in Latin, which comes from Numen, N-O-U-M-E-N, which is mind. So Numen, mind, man, gives Nain, Nomen. And Numen comes from Lumen, which is mundane light, electricity. Lux is divine light, which really is supposed to be luxurious light, which is magnetism, which is the Ein Sof, the Anama, the prime creator. And so when you, when you go down four steps from our true Lux nature, Lux produced Lumen, which produced Numen, mind, which produced name because we like to label things. You see, when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, he named all the animals, didn't he? You see, well, Adam is the atom, and the name that was given to the animals was given to them by light. It's called anomatopoeia. Anomatopoeia is the sound that is produced by, for instance, um, the word ash comes from anomatopoeia because um, burning wood is shh and then becomes ash. So this is how words were created, by their sound, you see. So when, when Rome uh, registers the name, they, they know that all letters have numerical value in gematria. For instance, A has the value of one, B is two, C three, D four, etc. And so if you carry a registered copyrighted name which does not belong to you, which is on your birth certificate, you have been numbered. And this is the number. In Egyptian, name is nome, N-O-M-E. In Italian, nome is name. And nome in Egyptian means this. 
a section of terrain of a nation. So really, your name has value because it is you are a section of terrain. You have elements from the country or the land, not country. Cu countries are paper fiction. Countries are like maps on paper. Land is real de jure. So you grew up on an, on, on an, in a nation and a land and you have the elements of that land. So you are, you are a name, really, because you are a section of terrain of a nation. Nation is native, natural. Uh, Na is salt, sodium, right? Sodium is salt, the eleventh element, and this is our body. Our body is made of twelve salts. So you see, natural and name and all of these things. What they've done is quite simple. In order to control the living, which is the de jure government, we the living, we the people, otherwise said, the republic a constitutional republic, in order to control it, you must create an artificial de facto system. And that is the de facto registration system of the Vatican. All birth certificates belong to the Vatican. And hence, any other church that is incorporated is Catholic. Catholic means universal. And so whether you're, you know, uh, an Islamist uh, or a Buddhist, or a Jehovah's Witness, or Orthodox, and you have a birth certificate, you do not belong to those churches. You belong to the Catholic Universal Church via the baptism, the ritual of the birth certificate name. If you are named, you are reduced, you are limited. Any name, as Romeo and Juliet pointed out, you know, it's quite simple. Um, a name is a brand. It means nothing. A rose can be called poo, but it still smells like a rose. Okay? And you can call poo a rose, but it still smells like poo. See, so it, the, the smell is real and the name is not. So if you go into court, for instance, and you say, yes, that's me, you have now stolen property which does not belong to you. You are committing fraud. There's a penalty of 20 years for doing such a thing. And so this is the, this is the lesson that was taught to Moses. I am nothing more, nothing less. Nothing more, nothing less. I am. I do not allow myself to be named. My friends call me. I go by. I am known by. But never say you are a name. This is a big fault. This is a big tragic mistake that humanity, they did fly with their thoughts like an eagle. Whether they were um, strong like a bear. And so then they would give them the name brave heart, you know, bear-like or flying like an eagle or whatever. And so this is the big trick, uh, guys. Name is brand. Bra and bra, abrasion. Everything that happens in the world of effects. Do we want to be reduced to no man from new men, from loo men, from looks? Or do we want to be from looks? Looks has no name. Absolutely, 100% correct. See um, Bill Donahue. Um, Bill Donahue has been teaching this beautiful astrotheological wisdom in New Jersey for 30 or 40 years. And um, he teaches and shows how the third ventricle and the fornix region and the pineal gland and all of this, the third heaven, the third ventricle, um, this is the cave of Brahma, the grotto of Jesus, where he was um, shut up in that tomb. And, and then the, the angels of light came to him when he was resurrected. This all has to do with the third ventricle. And by the way, um, Bill Donahue is very, very aged and his wife. And um, he could use some encouraging words if, if that's um, how, what kind of energy you can um, send him his way. Um, and perhaps ask him if he needs any other kind of support, he, you know, Ten bucks here and there might help, I don't know, uh, but I heard that um, things are not very good with Bill at the moment. And um, 
our brother has given us so much. I um, I hope that that has the the heavens have treasured up um, treasures for him in the latter part of of his age of his life because um, he has just given and given and given, and he has given gems of truth. So um, please uh, have him in in your thoughts. Um, a lot of images come to my mind, and I've got a lot of. Um, ideas of what it could be i'd have to look at it carefully myself but these are alchemical rest assured alchemy is al al is light um and so transmuting elements l light um is done under the constellations uh, various constellations for instance if you want to turn uh, iron into gold you must do that under the stars of scorpio and this is how we know that tropical astrology is 100% accurate and 100% um, uh, reliable because alchemists can change iron into gold because Mars is iron and is, ruled, uh, uh, is the ruler of Scorpio um, only under the stars of Scorpio. And that has not changed. See, sidereal astrology suggests that Scorpio is now shifted by 29, 30 degrees or whatever because when you go into your computers and you see that the planets are, are actually, you know, the sun right now is, is you know, in all the sky um, sites on the internet, you'll see the sun is still in, in Capricorn. It's not in Aquarius. So, and, and, and this is what's, what's called sidereal astrology. It, it shows where the sun actually is according to the, the stars. But tropical astrology does not acknowledge this. Tropical uh, uh, astrology occurs on the ecliptic so that on the 21st of March when the sun enters Aries, Aries will always be there because Aries is always after the equinox on the 24th of, of March. It never shifts. You see, the constellations... Virgo is, is bigger than 30 degrees. Aries is smaller than 30 degrees. So if we're going to go by the, the stars, um, well, they're off, you know, because they're, they're bigger than 30 degrees. Astrology is all about the tropical points, and it's all about 30-degree sections. Aries lives on the first 30 degrees of the ecliptic. Taurus lives on the... the second segment of 30 degrees it can never be shifted it never will be and this is the true science of astrology western tropical hermetic astrology based on the ecliptic so those figures with the rabbit and the bat and the eagle eagle is for eagle is for iron it's also for gold um it's you know, the bat and the rabbit, these will have male or feminine uh, properties. And what they're teaching is that um, the knowledge of these vibrations called elements, L, light, gives one the knowledge of how to transmute lead into gold in your body, not literal elements, which were they were able to do as well for sure, but it's transmuting the elements in the body and turning vices into virtues, sublimating the coarse into the sublime is a dutiful work that only certain ones who are enlightened care to undertake. The rest, they're quite happy eating and drinking, buying and selling. The gluttons, the drunkards, all of these will not inherit God's kingdom. Simply what that means is you can't because your body is acidic, your oils are consumed, and you will never, ever penetrate the higher consciousness, the higher chakras, because you don't have the, the, the correct vibration to go that high. So um, if you sent me a picture of that uh, image, perhaps we could talk about it next week. I don't know. Sure. I'll, have a look. I'll have a look into it. I hope I've shed some light on that. Okay. Yeah, it has to be. It matters not which angel or which demon, which is exactly the same thing, um, are speaking the language. If it, if it makes a sound, it's vibration. And there's only one language, it's called vibration, root language. Root is Ra, and everything comes from that. those two um, liquids, the letter R and the letter L. Um, the, the letter R is called a rhotic liquid, 
The letter L is called a lateral liquid because they are produced in the same spot in the mouth at the palate. The tongue to produce the R is the same as position as where to produce the L. But one is rhotic, vibrates, and the other one is um, produced laterally. The sound comes um, through the, the, the sides of the tongue. So there's two... It, there's two places where it comes from, whereas the R is one. And so when you consider that the letter R is the 18th letter of the alphabet, 666, and the letter L is the 12th, 666, um, and the letter um, R is in the proton, the letter L is in the electron. And so the letter R means the head, resh, the head, so it's the boss, and the letter L means ox goad. So it's like a little ox go, the, the electron, it's L, it's, it's pricking and, and goading and, and creating and making elements because L is the ox goad, the lambda, the lamb and the ox is in the L, you see, the lamb and the bull are everywhere. You will not, there's nowhere where it's not. I mean, look at the epic tales of um, the Hindus. They call it, uh, the, um, they've got a, um, a play called Ramilla, Ramilla. Ram and illa. Ill is a, um, a, a lewd. A lewd is an interlude. It's a play. It's so Ramilla. And in, um, in the Middle East, there's a town called Ramallah. Ram and Allah. And it's called the high mighty place. Yes, because Ramallah, Allah is the crown chakra. Remember, we learned that. These are the names of the chakras. Uh, lamb, Vam, Ram, Yam, Ham, Aum, and Allah. This is why your Freemasons and your Shriners, they all, you know, uh, say an oath to Allah. People don't realize this because they want to go to the high, the high Ram, Ramallah. You see, everywhere there is Ramilla, Ramallah, Ram, the high Ram, everywhere. It's all about the Ram. And, and this is why a Shriner, you see, they cel um, celebrate um, Allah because they are Sri Ram, Shrina Rams, Hiram, Shrina is Sri, Hi. Yeah, there you go. Um, well, I, I guess they call the, 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 there's two purple chakras, one's indigo and one's violet. Um, I believe, yeah, the top one is violet. So ultraviolet is where the higher chakras are, which we can't see, which belong to the white light. Um, yeah, atonement, at one -ment. Aton and meant, mind. Aton, A-T-O-N, that's Adam, and mind. Atonement, at one -ment. We are all here to undergo atonement because we've been divided, divide and rule. You see the compass and the square with the letter G in it of the uh, Freemasons? The compass, yeah, the compass is for uh, dividing and the ruler is for ruling. Divide and rule, divide and rule. And in every town you see the Lions Club and the Rotary Club and all of these pedophile gangs, you know, the Salvation Army, all run by pedophiles. And their motto, motto is backwards for Tom, motto is the word of God because Atom is the word of God. You see my presentation last week called Atom. Uh, or the one before, um, <clears throat> that their motto, their word, their spellbinding is divide and rule. Rome divides and conquers. D Rome um, seeks much pleasure in the fact that all those Christian churches out there are registered under her because she is the corporate mother of the world and all registrations have to abide by the regis. They must follow the rules of the regis. It's okay to criticize them like the Jehovah's Witnesses do. They're always criticizing the Catholics, but it doesn't matter because the Catholic Church knows that they are getting mind controlled and revenue from it. And that's all they want. Control the minds so that it is not at one mint and so that they can conquer and, and rule. And that's what they're doing. So we have to lose the legal the legal bindings that she has bound us to, legal tender, legal name, and all of these concepts, we have to give them back or we have to deal with them. There are, 
you know, um, there's ways, there's many ways, but we have to know what they are. First thing is to know what really those things are that they are doing to us by dividing us, what their symbols mean, because they have good meanings, but that, but they also have an inversive meaning, which is what is applied. They apply those. For instance, a cathedral, right? A cathedral is supposed to be a place for blue feminine energy. Uh, Kathy is feminine, um, you know, and it's, she's pure, but it's a cathode and it's a cation. And all of these are negative ions, you see. A cathode is your negative terminal on your battery. A cathedral, Catholic church, all of this cath, cath, cath. Well, it's all the negative stream. Anion and anode and synagogue and all of the ana words, that's fire, that's more positive. That's the, the ran um, energy. But nonetheless, it, it matters not. They use positive energy, they use negative energy, both for bad controlling purposes. But the point is, we need to know what they're doing. We need to enlighten, be enlightened and be aware and awaken. Yep, absolutely. And there are always two testaments. And um, as Bill Donahue points out, the testicles, Scorpio, is the lower testament. And the testa in Hebrew, which means, uh, sorry, in Italian, testa means head, is Aries, both ruled by Mars, and those are the two testaments, because Aries is concerned with spiritual things, the land, pure, Agnes, whereas Scorpio, this is the generative area, and that's concerned with generating more life, which is a, a very powerful creative sign, the Scorpio sign. Um, and so because it creates, it's the sign that creates physical things. No other sign really does that. It manifests physical life. And so what are we concerned in? Are we concerned in having children and a great legacy of physical worldly things here? Or are we concerned with the testament of the mind, the head of Aries, the lamb and the spiritual, the ecclesiastical true um things where Jesus said, do not store your treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, but store your treasures in heaven. These are the two testaments. Um, answer is yes, positive to both questions. Um, the raising of the oil is, is natural. It's going to happen anyway. The thing is, we can hurry it. That's, that's, that's all we're discussing here. It, it's going to happen naturally to everyone living. But that, of course, is as long as they do not resist the Holy Spirit, as long as they do not hate it, as long as they are not um, wrongdoers and killing. Killing is the only, any, any kind of murder, any kind of death, the, the destruction of any kind of energy which is natural is sin. And those who partake in that, those who are polluting the earth, killing other people in wars and everything like that, they have put a temporary hold on the raising of the oil. If not, they are absolutely destroying it and wrecking havoc. But you and I and the listeners, we are, we are all seeking the true path. We're not, we're not killing anymore. We're not, we are seeking life. And when you do that and you live a life of moderation, not overeating, not overdrinking, doing healthy things, changing the way our body chemistry Changing your body chemistry, that doesn't mean just to eat alkaline foods. No, you, you, you know, there's acidic foods that are good for you too. It's a balance. It's 7.2 on the pH scale. And, and that's all that is required. We have to take care of the temple of soul of man. And we have to be a good architect, Hiram Abiff. And you can do this with your partner. You can do it better with your loving partner. But not everyone has a loving partner. Some people are living in partnerships where they don't have love. They don't feel that soulmate energy, that twin flame. And the twin flame thing, that is going to happen. Sooner or later, it must happen. You cannot have atonement without your, tw your twin flame. It cannot happen because the male is red and the woman is blue and they must create a purple color, color together and they must come into a at one moment together atonement and so but for single people they also can um 
you know, there's there's ways of practicing tantric magic sex um, for singles. And um, I'm not really qualified to offer any uh, advice there or any, you know, tips or anything like that. But there are great books out there. Do the research. Uh, the best information will come from re- your own research. OK, I've got. Everything that I have, I am self-taught in everything. I left school when I was 15. I was out of there, right out of there. I did not want to have a fathead disease. I went home and I bought books. I got on uh, the book club and I was ordering three books a week. And I had a big library. I was only a young teenager and I was studying physics, chemistry, theology, everything on my own. Languages, music, I'm self-taught. I do not have teachers. I never have. That doesn't mean to say that having a guru, a teacher, is a bad thing. You should have a guru. I did have gurus here and there, you know, temporary ones that I gleaned and learned much information off. You know, we are gurus. Guru means black and white. That's what it means, guru. Hence, in Japanese, kuro means black. And in Australia, the Aborigines are called kuris. Kuris. Japan, kuro. India, guru, it all has to do with light. Guru, black and white. And so the black people, the kuris, the guris, gurus, and, and my Aboriginal friend said that the original word is guru. Well, that's Indian. Hello. And so to be a light person, to be a guru, you must be a guru. And if you do get advice and, and wisdom and knowledge from another guru, another light being, that's fine. But we don't, but the thing is, all the answers are internal. And, and you will only get the best information when you do the research. So there, there is a book, uh, there is a video online, which I recommend called Sex, the Secret Garden to Eden. And it's an alchemical product. It was produced by the followers of Samael Aunweor, who was a Colombian Rosicrucian uh, teacher who's passed away now, and he was teaching this tantric sacred sex where um, men in particular do not have an orgasm. They save their seed, and um, it um, uh, it is, uh, what's the word? Uh, it, it is made to vibrate on a higher vibration, and it, that energy is stored for spiritual purposes. So, you know, it's not a, a, a matter of... Um, uh, no sex or a lot of sex it's up to the individual you know that is their their choice and and um you'll always you'll always know when you've had the right kind of sex because um it's the feeling that your soul has afterward which tells you whether you had good sex or bad sex now Sometimes um, sex can give you a guilty feeling. You you just uh, you just feel guilty after it. You feel drained. You feel like you've lost something. You know you might feel relaxed and 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 so forth. But but there's another nagging little thing there, as though you you something went wrong or whatever. But other times you know it feels fulfilling. You feel as though you've achieved something. You've experienced something wonderful with your partner or without. You know, you've climbed up the ladder. It is a way of, because Scorpio is where the genitalia is and proper use of that can activate the Kundalini and the Kundabhafa and um, stimulate them to uh, drive through the chakras and eventually end up in the head. And we hear of many great tantric masters who talk about the spiritual orgasm that they have simply by withholding the physical one. The physical one is is great. It feels great. No one can deny that. We know how magic sex is. But how many people have never experienced the higher orgasm, the one that happens in the head? The the, the mind is the best sexual organ, you know, not the uh, generative organs. It's the mind. The mind, when the mind is pleased sexually, um, then one is truly, truly satisfied. And one must learn to practice sex that gives them that continual divine satisfaction because if they don't get that, they're doing something wrong. So it's all about the individual, you know. The individual must explore and discover for themselves. Yes. Yes, it can. Um, 
read The Light of Egypt, Volume 1, by Thomas H. Burgoyne. Um, in there, in the chapter called The Dark Satellite, you can get it free online. It talks about this, and elsewhere in the book it talks about this, and also in the chapter on sex, it talks about this, this kind of um, uh, godly, divine sex, which, um, which brings us to uh, our, our soulmates or twin flames, if you like. Thomas H. Burgoyne addresses all of these subjects in The Light of Egypt, Volume 1. It's, um, it is my favourite book. It is the greatest book I've ever read. It gave me syncretism. It opened my mind to astrotheology more than anything else on the planet. The Light of Egypt, and he founded the Hermetic Brothers of Luxor. Luxor is still there. It's a temple right next door to the, the other temple I mentioned, only two miles down the Nile from the Temple of uh, Karnak, the largest temple complex, 60 acres in the world the highest pillars in the world, the hypostyle hall with 132 massive pillars takes 18 people with outstretched arms to circle the pillars at the bottom. And that is the temple to the Ram, and the temple of Luxor is the temple to man. It's the temple of man. And Thomas H. Burgoyne was... Um, well versed in, in those two temples and that's where the knowledge comes from most of the knowledge of syncretism and so there you will learn about this how souls can dissipate and they can act, actually be lost forever but the the atoms the spiritual atoms of those souls will be incorporated in other bodies but the individual the soul the individual soul will be lost so but look it takes a hell of a lot of bad <laughs> bad stuff to 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 get to that stage guys we we do not need to fear this we are we are whole we are we are a unit unit is backwards for a tin which is another way of saying adam because adam is a unit he is one uncuttable and we are units emitting emitting is also from the word atom emitting light and this light will never be destroyed as long as we stay on the path stay on the path of truth love justice do no wrong do no harm and um we will contain you... our souls i'm not sure that's that's one that i'm still looking for answers about this um uh, but certainly it uh, cannot be um an obstacle to the oil because they're not connected. Um, the reason I was um, looking at uh, the the um, termination of um, of uh, pregnancy termination is because uh, in hermetic science it explains there that um, there are there are natural reasons and there are other reasons why this occurs and the effect that that causes um, it might cause a temporary um, shock to the system whereby the, the body is now um, you know because you see a pregnancy is a life in in the body is a new situation in the body the, the body adapts and when uh, say um, you know miscarriage happens or something it shocks it shocks the woman and you know they can go into depression they can <clears throat> they can be uh sorely um the life can be sorely missed too um because there's a reason why that soul wanted to um join this this partnership of father and mother they come through their vibration and so um this is is, is a big shock and 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 a shock to the body is usually associated with acidity and so watch out for things like depression post traumatic um, stress, watch out for uh, cancer because that's where cancer comes from. It comes from mucus, mold, stress. Stress causes it, you see. So it's, it's like it's not a pleasant thing. You know, no woman um, experiences, you know, pleasant delight when, you know, after a miscarriage or something like that. Um, there's, there's always uh, some kind of um, depression there. So I would say that it might be a temporary um, block, but uh, nothing is permanent. 
and uh, everything is everything is salv- salvageable, no matter what you go through. Some people lose, you know, lose organs like spleen, uh, thyroid gland, um, tonsils. All of these are detrimental. They're all detrimental, you know. So some people have lost, you know, um, bones of their vertebrae, uh, the or what? Have, it, all of this is obstacles that each one has to work on. So know your body, know what your obstacle is. And um, through meditation, you can feel everything of the body and what is wrong and what is right. And so, you know, allow more light to heal the body. Allow more love. Every time you say something loving, you are healing yourself. It comes back to you. So any woman out there who is um, suffering depression through something like this, um, well, you know, just get back on track get back on you you climb the mountain you're going to have some slip backs uh so just stay on the path stay true to the path okay well conclusively i cannot respond to that but well, suffice to say that um i know that gayness comes from the ecliptic okay it comes from the the stars so to speak um for instance mercury conjunct mars I've done the charts of gay people, and that's one of the causes. Uranus conjunct uh, Mercury, I've seen that. Um, certain conjunctions. Um, if you've got mutable signs in all of the angles, for instance, the Ascendant, the MC, the Descendant, and the IMC, the four cardines of the astrology, um, when Mercury, say, is in... Um, uh, certain signs, like I think Virgo, and it's in an angle. This produces gay inclinations. Um, again, gay, straight, whatever. We all have to learn our bodies and have satisfactory sex. That's the point. If you're guilty, if you're feeling like there's something wrong, well, then there is, because that's what you feel. No one else is projecting that to you. And so... As Fernicus Maternus said, the great astrologer for in the 4th century, and uh, I would recommend his book, Mathesios, for any astrologer, uh, because it has information there about gay uh, people, etc., and how they are produced by the stars. Um, uh, as, as they all encourage, uh, we all have the, the task of raising the oil. So... You know, that's a question that each individual has to has to respond to. Some gay people are born really, really effeminate and some gay women are born really, really masculine. That's in their nature. It's there. But it doesn't mean to say that, that they should abuse it because uh, straight sex, gay sex, it, you know, in general can be either abusive or loving or, or good. And um, the individual has to make it thus. Yeah, look... Um, probably I would recommend for people to go to the internet and search um, the the great philosophers and what they said thousands of years ago about this practice of eating animals. Uh, check out Porphyry, Plutarch, Ovid, Pythagoras, and that should do it. Um, but all of them, every single one of them were vegetarian. There was not one who worked in the temples who ate the flesh of meat. Um the sacrifices that were given and uh, et cetera, et cetera, these were not literal sacrifices. Literal sacrifices did, did actually happen, but this was with the aberration of the fall of man and the loss of consciousness. Um, but certainly Porphyry and Plutarch, um, if you look in the, uh, on, on the net, there's some great vegetarian articles from these two great philosophers. And in fact, Porphyry wrote a whole treatise on animal eating and how harmful it can be to the flesh. Um, the animal chakras are the, the ones below the heart. And most of humanity are stuck there through eating animals. Animals, when you eat animals, you have more rage than vegetarians. And hence, you know, um, it's strongly encouraged to eat pork and and all of these animals which are more um, unhealthy for human consumption. And the, the armies, the armies uh, of the world, uh, you know, are, are stuffed with pork, a lot of pork. The American soldiers that, that fight and kill for Halliburton and Blackwater and all these corporations, they get a lot of pork because 
This will give them, you know, like uh, a condition of rabia, rabies, you know, which is anger and hatred and, and animalistic viciousness. Uh, these young men and women have not reached the heart chakra. Remember in Revelation, it speaks about the lamb and the lion who are worthy to open the seven seals. Well, that's because, first of all, your journey begins at the heart chakra, the lion, and it ends at the lamb chakra, um, Aries, the crown chakra. And they are worthy because that's where you want to live, between the heart and the head. When the lion and the lamb lay down, there will be peace. This is why the Nile River begins at the delta in Heliopolis. Heliopolis is the heart, Leo. It was devoted to, the temples there were devoted to Horus, the hawk and the lion god, Horus, and, and that's the heart chakra. And then they went all the way up to Karnak, the, the holiest of all the temples, which is the crown chakra devoted to Amun-Ra, the ram-headed god. And, and that's Egypt. Egypt did not deal with the lower chakras. They started at the delta and they ended up at Karnak from the lion to the lamb. And so eating animals is anything to do with shedding blood. The soul is in the blood. Anima means soul. Animale means a bad soul. Male in Latin means bad. So animale, animated bad, is what animal means, bad animation, is these souls, they're not bad, but they're called bad because they're not human because they don't have the same consciousness. They haven't got the two-way consciousness that we have, the reflective consciousness where we can self-examine ourselves. We have this beautiful consciousness. That's divine, divided, two-way. Animals have an instinctive one-way. They can't examine themselves and look at themselves in the mirror and say, oh, goodness, look at me, you know, oh, I should uh, improve this and I should improve that or whatever. They can't do that, you see. And so they are bad souls, animale. When you shed their blood and you eat their carcasses, you are a um, carcass cruncher. That's what the philosophers call them, carcass crunches, the crunches of death. And, and there's no life in dead carcass. There is the shedding of blood only. And those souls, Porphyry says, the animals that scream just because they are unintelligible does not mean they are not screaming to you, why do you have to eat me? which you cannot transmute when you have other better food, fruits of all kinds of aroma and flavor, aromatic vegetables and nuts and seeds and grains. Why do you have to do this to me? Why? I want to live. And they scream. Their screams are screams of the, their life. Yep, it's all kinds of murder. Uh, uh, humans have been trained to think that we are animal eaters by the elites. They know that we're not. We're vegetarian. We don't have the intestines to cope with meat. They're too long. They're not short enough. There should be short intestines for meat-eating animals. We are not meat eaters. There is nothing that suggests that we, uh, we should eat meat. This is what the elites have been doing to choke us with the, the vibration of death so that we do not come to life. We cannot know the true life. It's already here. Paradise and, and heaven is a condition on earth just as hell is. You hear people saying heaven on earth and you hear them saying hell on earth. That's because that's where it is. Earth is ether. It's an anagram for ether. Earther, ether. Just like um, Keitha is the opposite of Malkuth, foundation. Keitha is ether. And so they are one and the same thing. Heaven is a condition and we can find it by not murdering, not killing not destroying anything when we destroy vegetation they also scream but they scream with joy because they know that veg raw vegetables are able to be assimilated in the human body animals cannot so it's waste it's a total waste of life sure it might be delicious to have condiments and oils and all sorts of flavors and herbs on a on a on a steak uh, I, I don't think so but some people do they lick their lips and they think oh a nice steak with some vegetables and that sure but it is totally and utterly the only benefit is is the seeming benefit to the palate and the palate is controlling all of human life they are gluttonous they love to eat flesh and death and and they love to stuff their faces and their stomachs, their paunches, their God. 
and they do not know the higher chakras. We, <clears throat> we are not of this kind, friends. <clears throat> we will never, <clears throat> we will never partake in that kind of slaughter. Take away the S from slaughter, and you get laughter. Simply why? Because when you stop slaughtering, then you will find the laughter. All the fear and anxiety that the world has, even though they delight in eating and partaking in all of this sinful and criminal uh, type of um, uh, diet, is they, you, you, you watch them. I mean, you look at them. They're taking, <clears throat> they are the ones that take um, antacid pills and, and diabetes, uh, insulin and, and arthritis this and diabetics that and piles here and who knows what mental disease and everything. I don't have any of those things. I don't take any pills. I don't take anything. I I've, I've never, my body has never heard of diabetes, arthritis or any of that stuff. I do not know it. I refuse to know because I don't eat death. My body is a temple. I respect my body. I love my body. I put light into my body, only light and only good food. Right now, it's about midday and all I've had is apple cider vinegar with water. One litre of apple cider vinegar with water. Apple cider vinegar is a must in your diet. It is absolutely a must. Without it, you, <laughs> you, you will be suffering. Those are the sort of foods that give you... There's so many minerals in apple cider vinegar. There's so much goodness that comes from it. You know, you can... Yes. Add, add turmeric. Notice turmeric begins with T-U-M, Atum. Turmeric is one of the most divine foods. If you put that, especially for people who are lacking in energy, turmeric is, is hot. It, you know, like cayenne pepper also. It... Um, it will give you charge, electrical charge, voltage. The body only requires voltage from the food. When you cook the food, the enzymes are dead. Even when you just just um, lightly cook them, you're actually killing the enzymes, and that is the voltage that your body requires. So raw food, raw food, is what you should intake. And keep those enzymes alive. And you'll... Well, we're about done for today anyway, guys. Two hours is a good, um, good solid lesson. So uh, I'm pretty good. I think I've covered everything um, in my presentation uh, today, the one hour. And there were great questions. I think we've just about covered everything. There's always some loose things that uh, can be mentioned, but we can save that for another time. And you look at the word atonement, attention, and you will see atom or derivatives of the word atom in all words. So I'm going to teach how to pay attention to words. There's only one language, and there's and it's a monosyllabic language. And and when you understand this, then all things will be opened. And you must always learn the trick of looking in the mirror at words, as um, many of the great philosophers through the ages have said. Words must be looked at backwards. You must look at them forwards and backwards and anagrams of the words. You must look at the anagrams because you'll see then the associations. For instance, you know, um, Adan in Spanish, A-D-A-N. That's the, um, the Spanish version for Adam and the Greek for atom. Well, <clears throat> D-A-N is D-N-A and it's also A-N-D, which is a and D is the let the word and Andros man Andrew manly so regardless and in, in Japanese dance is man so there's Spanish Hebrew Greek Japanese English and Greek all with those with an anagram of DNA and DNA is what man is made of so it's all there no one, Francis Crick didn't come along and say, oh, let, well, let me just call it DNA. It was predestined. It was already chosen. It was already said. It was already done. Way before he ever breathed one atom of... There's, there's nothing... It's already been done. The Temple of Solomon has been built. We have to invest time into paying attention to discovering it. This is why people now uh, are discovering numbers. You know, every time they look at the clock, they see one, 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 one. Uh, you know, every time they lift their head up, they see a sign, a traffic sign that has meaning for them. Um, every time they turn on the TV, there's a message. It, this is what's going on. 
the, the messages were already there. Everything is already there. We haven't been paying attention. Now it's time to turn our backs on Babylon the Great and legal this and legal that and enter into the lawful realms of the Jewish living. We are living. We are self-determined. That is the government that exists. It cannot exist on paper. Thanks, everyone. Thank Take care. You.